Okay. <clears throat> Pioneer PL-4 turntable. Might be gold, might be garbage. I don't know. Um, just picked this up. That's kind of interesting that that clicker switch is, like, delayed. But anyway, um, picked this up from the estate sale auction thing. Uh, might be great, might be rubbish. It's got an Audio-Technica cartridge on it. I just plugged it into electricity. Let's see if it works. Okay, so that's a good start. It spins. And then we can look at the stroboscope here. It's got a mirror. And we've got to see if we can make the... 33 on the bottom come to an appropriate acceptable speed and the answer is finally yes it will come to an appropriate speed but this controller I have to have this thing all the way up to dimed to get it to stop and if I slide it any other different way it kind of gives me the finger so that's a little weird. Let's check 45. Let's see what it does there. Yeah, this control, this roller pitch wheel is all over the place. So this is a dirty control. And if I remember right, these can really be a pain in the keister to get inside of um, because of the way the arm comes off. So I've got the arm lifted. Let's play our record here, get to the end, and let's see if the return mechanism, oh okay, there it goes, pushing back, and click. Okay, so, plausible. Um, if that's a normal everyday speed pot, odds are I can probably drip this stuff down past the wheel. Yes, I know this is MacGyver. Don't hate me. I do not want to open this unless I have to. Alright. Let's see if that got us anywhere. If it didn't, then poo. But if it did, then trollolololololo. Because if I remember right, sometimes I think the bottom comes off, but to get this top deck off, this is a nightmare. You gotta take apart the whole arm. I believe I recall that from a previous unit. Hmm. That still feels mighty sticky, but let's see if we had any positive effect on this. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay, that looks like it's in the middle. How about 33? Where's that at? That is still only at the top of the register. Uh-huh. So 33 is at the top of the register. Hmm. Let's try 45 again. Forty-five is supposed to be on the top. It's supposed to be the top of the top of the top of the register. I'm reading the wrong spot again. So forty-five on sixty hertz. Yes, I can do it, but it's this is a dirty, dirty control. So we're going to have to clean the control before we can do anything about it. But hey, at least the cut button works, right? Okay, so. How bad did we dig ourselves a grave? At this point, I'm going to say not really. So, I'm kind of happy. Let's unplug it and give it a okay, flip. Okay, so my fears are confirmed. You have to take the arm off. The, the motor and all this stuff is lifted there, and this plastic deck sits on top of this mess. But if I'm careful and I can just lift this just a little bit, I can actually see where I can snake the straw to my contact cleaner back here and I should be able to get that in the pot from there and then hopefully manipulate this and get it to loosen up 
and we're going to try that because if that's what that needs to work right and we don't have to tear this all down, that will be a good day. Okay, so that sort of got us where we had to go, sort of. Um, it did smooth this out where it's not herky jerking around, but the... I should be looking at the second band down for 45, which is the speed we're on. When I get to the absolute top of the range is where it finally shuts the heck up. And then with 33, I should, again, I should be at the bottom. I have to be at the absolute top of the range. And that's not right. This should kind of fall somewhere in the middle. So going from the last Pioneer I did, there are, uh, let's just break something here. All right, there's a couple of adjustment screws down here on the bottom. They put two pin holes in them, and you put your little screwdriver, precision screwdriver in there. You can catch them, and you can tweak these pots a little bit. I'm just going to give them a little tweak. And one of them runs the 33, and the other one runs the 35, the 45 based off the 33. So I don't know which pot I'm actually tweaking right now, but it will affect either one or both speeds. Let's try to run this again and see what happens. Okay, so I've got I'm at the top of the range for 33, and I'm tweaking this, and not a damn thing is happening. So this must be the 45 pot. Oh yes, that is the 45 pot that we're on. So I don't want to mess with that one. I want to mess with the 33 pot first. So let's see. Let me see if I can find that under here. I'm doing this all by feel because you can't see doodly squat in there. You just have to kind of trust that there is a... I think I'm back in the 45 one again because that isn't making any difference. So I might have to look under here again. I'm trying to feel for the spot where the screwdriver goes. Ay, ay, ay. Alright, there's that one. There's the other one. It's over here. Okay. And I encourage everybody who wants to work on one of these stupid things to go get yourself a copy of the service manual from a site like Vinyl Engine. Okay, I'm going to put this in the middle ish. Let's see, so this goes one thumb, two thumbs, three thumbs to the top. So we're going to go one thumb and a half thumb. And then we'll tweak this until the stroboscope stops. Let's just zoom in on the stroboscope. Maybe you can see it with me. I have crap camera angles. Let's try this. Let's see. I don't know if that's even readable. Can you all see that maybe? Try to come in off the top. I don't know if I can see that on there or not. Probably not. But that's what I'm looking at anyway. And I've actually got it almost set. But essentially you want it when it's on 60 hertz, which is US, you know, power. You want that to ride to look like it's stopped. Okay. I'm just going to work that pot a little bit just to clean any schmoo off of it. And then I've got that worked to a pretty good stop. So now that I've got 33 set, I'll switch to 45. That last one of these I had to do did not have a strobe in it, which really sucked. Come on, let's find the, let's get our screwdriver in the pot. Okay, that's making it worse. Speed it up. And that did not, I can only slow down a lot. I can't speed up a lot. So I'm at the top of the range for my 45 pot. I can definitely get it into focus if I kick it up a little bit more. 
but I don't like that idea. So let's make our 33 run a little bit slow because in an ideal situation I would love for the user of this just to be able to switch 33 and 45 and not have to tweak the speed adjustment from record to record. I think you all can maybe appreciate that. I'm trying to get this stupid screwdriver back in the correct slot here so I can readjust the 33. Can I do it? Of course not. Why? Because the camera's running. If I turn it off, I would hit it immediately. It's very easy to do this stuff when the camera's not watching you. And I'm still missing. But on these pioneers, if I remember right, I still can't hit it. Good freaking grief. around with it. Did I get it that time? Oh, I did. Okay, I got it that time. So, all right, let's see where that's at. Now, See where 45 is in relevance to that. That's really close. Okay, 33 is on and 45 is on, so now I'm happy. Okay, so that takes care of that happy happiness. And this thing rolls pretty freely, which is cool. Let's just come out in the middle of a record and then we'll hit the cut button and make sure that works. Guess not. If I come to the end of the record it works. Okay, so the cut button's not working. Is it because it's down too far? And it needs to come up a little more? Is it jammed? I don't know. But it should work. If I press that in the middle of a play, it should automatically stop my play. It does not poop. Did it before I fid did it did it work before I fidgeted with the screws? Is it because this isn't level? Okay, so I guess you're just going to have to take my word for it. When you, this cut switch, when you press it, there's a little finger up here that presses a lever. And it just comes over and pushes the lever and then engages the cut function. When I separated the halves to get to the pot for this, when I dropped it, it ended up at this side. So when you press the cut switch, the lever was just going into nothing as opposed to being on this side where it could press the switch. I hope that makes any sense. It would have been impossible to film. But uh, anyway, I've got the queuing level lever up. I can come over here. The speeds look good. Click on cut now. And it does that, which is what it's supposed to do. It's essentially the same lever that gets pushed automatically when it makes it to the end of your record. It should come back and stop. Okay, cool. So the only things we really haven't checked here are the cartridge stylus. Cartridge and cartridge stylus. It looked, the cartridge stylus looked okay to me, but that's not under a microphone, or micro, microphone, microscope. Um, but Sometimes, even when you look at them and everything, you can't tell. So you just play it and see how it sounds. And if it sounds okay, you're okay. Um, if that's the case, we'll try this on some crappy Polka records. And 
then we can essentially end this video. I mean, I just need to set the tracking force for a cartridge like this. It's probably about two, two to two and a half grams, and the uh, we'll set the anti skate. So I guess I'll just take it over to the stereo since that uh, Technics is ready to leave, and we'll give it a test over there. Okay, so <clears throat> we're playing the right speed, and we're playing a Polka record because every time we play anything other than one of these weird, obscure international Polka records, we get a copyright strike. Not that I really care. Um, so, yeah, the cantilever on the cartridge looks okay. It's riding about where I would expect it to be for this model Audio Technica. I'm sure the alignment's probably fine, but I'll put the protractor on that, and uh, I'll set the anti-skate and the tracking force to, you know, probably for this cartridge, I can look it up, but it's probably about two, two grams, usually. It's what they like to be, around two grams. No, oh, hooray. There's a 33, or I'm sorry, a 45. And then, yeah, cut function works good. This is a nice torquey, torquey turntable because it's a direct drive, so that actually works a little better than it does on the belt drives. I did notice on these international records the centerpiece there, the 45 centerpiece, really kind of likes to stick in there. Speaking of international things, there's our cuckoo clock. And Okay, so here's our other 33, it's a 10 inch record, put this on 33, and we'll just double check the speed, that looks pretty close, there we go, and play, hooray. That's your favorite song, isn't it? I just know how to pick them. So yeah, this turntable is going to be in sellable condition. It's going to get a bath and just a couple of function adjustments and then we're good to go. So despite the fact that I bought an imperfect turntable at the estate sale, um, I did not get skunked this time. I got a little skunked on that PV, but it'll, it'll come out in the wash and we still have one more thing to go over from that sale. Thanks for watching.